a chef is my absolute passion. And cooking up science recipes is my speciality. I'm Busta Beaker, and this is Cooking with Science. Oh, hello. Welcome to Cooking with Science. I'm Busta Beaker. <laughs> Delicious. Nothing is more important to have fresh than your seafood. It's what makes the difference between a fresh fish... <laughs> ah, and one that isn't so fresh. <laughs> <coughs> If you live by the ocean, you probably know that the water gets high tide and low tide. Look closely, it's the same location. Amazing! Oh. But did you know that this is caused by the gravity of the moon and the sun? Say this cookie is the Earth. And this little happy fellow is me. Hello! <laughs> and this string represents the water around the Earth. If we didn't have gravity to worry about, the water would all be equally deep around the Earth. But here comes the moon, this mushroom. Now, the moon has gravity, and that pulls the oceans towards it a little bit, like this. And that creates high tide there, and low tide here, and a little bump of high tide on the other side of the Earth. And as the Earth rotates and I'm on it, I experience low tide and high tide and low tide and high tide. Very interesting. But there's another factor. The sun, or this lemon. Now, the sun also affects the tides, but not as much as the moon. Now, the sun does not affect the tides as much as the moon because it's much further away, but it still has an effect. If the sun was here, then the tides would be pulled away a little bit like that, and the tides would be less severe. But if the moon and the sun line up, like over here, you'd get a very, very high tide and very, very low tide. So there you are. That's how the tides are affected by the gravity of the moon and the sun. Mmm, delicious. I'm Buster Beaker, and thank you for joining me on Cooking with Science. Oh. The Wizard Academy. All you have to do is demonstrate true magic and you will be granted entry. Well, Fuzzix, who is the next applicant for the Wizard Academy? Overwhelmo. Indeed it is I, Overwhelmo. And prepare to be overwhelmed. Would you be flabbergastified if I balanced this coin on its end? Not really, no. But would you be impressed if I was to balance this coin on top of this coin! Possibly. Prepare to be flustered and stupefied. Stupid. Stupid flustered as I balance three coins on their ends on top of this glass. Well, that certainly would seem like magic. Let us see. Okay. No pressure, Overwhelmo. You can do this. And now, I say, a magic word. A magic word! Ha 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 ha! And now, you must let me into your academy! Being a chef is my absolute passion. And cooking up science recipes is my speciality. I'm Buster Beaker, and this is Cooking with Science. Ah. Oh, hello! Welcome to Cooking with Science. I'm Buster Beaker. Whenever friends come over, I like to make my famous potato chip recipe. And look at this bag of potato chips. Quite large, there must be a lot of potato chips in here, right? Well, let's open it. What? This potato chip bag is mostly air. Why do potato chip bags have so much air? Well, to tell you the answer to that, I have to tell you the story of two bags of potato chips. Here they are, this one full of air, and this bag of potato chips, there's not much air in it at all. Why don't they make them like this? Well, let's find out. First thing that happens is the potato chip bags come off the conveyor belt at the potato chip factory where they get packed into a crate. Here's a crate here. So let's really stuff them in. And then the crate gets boxed up and shipped off to the store. Oh, it's a bumpy ride to the store today. Now we're at the store. And then you come along. Ah, bags of potato chips. What else should I buy today? Oh, I know. How about a cantaloupe? Very nice. Some apples, yes? 
and take it home, walk along, and you get to the kitchen, you have a choice. This bag of potato chips, where all the potato chips are light and fluffy, or this bag of potato chips, which is not exciting at all. And that's why potato chip bags had so much air, to protect the potato chips from getting crushed. Speaking of potato chips, time to get back to my recipe. What is it? It's potato chip soup. Well, hi, Master Beaker, and thanks for joining me on Cooking with Science. Perhaps a little bit more cooking. <laughs> oh, hello there. I, whoa. Uh, here's a fun science experiment you can do with science and friction together. Take two books, put them on top of each other, and pull them apart. Ooh, not too much friction. But if you take the books and you interleave some of the pages, maybe three or four parts, and try it again, pull them apart, they're a little harder to pull apart. That's because the friction for more pages touching each other actually starts to add up. So, what if we were to take two books with a lot of pages and very carefully and meticulously take each page individually, one at a time, and overlay each one and go back and forth? These are two books completely shuffled together. The elastic band is actually just to hold the covers together. All right. So, now, the friction between all of these pages, when I try to pull it apart, makes it pretty much impossible. Now, there's two things going on here. First of all, when you start to pull the books apart, the pages start to stick together because they squeeze together, because you're pulling and they're squeezing. And the fact that there's so many pages sticking together, the friction builds up to a degree that is actually very impressive. But don't take my word for it. Let's max it out. Here is another two books, elastic just to hold the covers. This one clamped to the wall, and I'm gonna pull this one. <laughs> Science! Still don't believe me? Well, let's max it out some more. Two books, all the pages layered together, held together only by friction, suspended over a giant bat of slime. Now, <laughs> let's see how much faith I have in science. <laughs> Friction, yeah! Okay, okay, oh no. Okay, now to get down. Okay, hold on. And then... <laughs> science! <laughs> that was close. is an egg. It's been hard-boiled and peeled, so there's no shell on it. This is a flask, and this is hot water. I pour the hot water into the flask, which means the air inside the flask starts to heat up. And when it heats up, it expands, and some escapes through the top of the bottle. I pour the water out, and then I cap the flask with the egg. Now this expanded air is starting to cool again, which means it's lower pressure, which means the higher pressure on the outside of the flask pushes the egg in. Ha <laughs> ha, fun! And then, to get the egg out, you... hmm. Ah, I can reverse it. If I blow into the flask, I can increase the pressure inside. <laughs> Science! And now let's max it out. Max out container! Okay, pour out the water. Oh, careful, careful. And now I put this water balloon on the top and we'll just see what happens. The hot expanded air inside the container is cooling and reducing in pressure, which means the higher pressure outside the container, it's happening, pushes the balloon in. It's happening! Oh. <laughs> Maxed out! Hmm. Wait, I can play Mary Had a Little Lamb. 
It's working! It's working! <laughs> Newton's cradle at a bowling balls. Come on! You know this one. Sing along. 